Last October, U.S. politicians sat down and figured out a game plan to stop the rise of China. The plan was simple. The U.S. Commerce Department banned all companies, even foreign ones, from selling advanced semiconductor technologies to China. The law was so strict that even companies based outside the United States cannot sell to China if their products contained U.S. origin technologies. Donald Trump is the U.S. president who first escalated the trade war with China. But as this Japan Times article points out, Biden's chip curbs out outdo Trump in forcing the world to align on China. The Biden government quickly got to work. They contacted close allies like the Netherlands, Japan, and Korea, and forced them to start banning microchip sales to China. The US government sent letters to top toolmakers, including LAM Research and Applied Materials, requiring them to halt shipments of equipment to wholly Chinese-owned factories. Jim Lewis, a technology and cybersecurity expert at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, proudly said, this will set the Chinese back light years. Mr. Lewis further explained that the United States' harsh policies towards China had a close feeling to the tough regulations at the height of the Cold War with Russia, which is actually quite incredible when you think about it. Last year, the United States imported a record $536 billion worth of products from China. China remains the United States' closest trading partner, but here we are gloating that we are going to send the Chinese back into the Stone Age with our latest political moves. When it started, the plan seemed perfect. Every U.S politician, regardless of political affiliation, was on board to stop the rise of China. But just seven months later, the plan is unraveling almost as quickly as it was put together. In a new report from Reuters, industry experts reveal that the U.S. microchip export controls designed to stop China's developments of supercomputers and artificial intelligence are only having minimal effects on China's tech sector. Instead, these controls are having a much larger and more significant impact on semiconductor companies around the world. Samsung's profit plunged 95% to its lowest level since 2009 as chip demand slumps. Taiwan's TSMC reported its first drop in monthly revenue in almost four years. Meanwhile, just last month, America's Intel reported the largest quarterly loss in company history. In today's video, I'm going to break down three major issues surrounding the ongoing chip war. Number one, I'm going to show you how China is finding a way to survive U.S. sanctions. Number two, I'm going to show you how foreign companies are finding a way around U.S. sanctions to continue selling to China. And number three, I'll reveal how the failed U.S. sanctions on Russia just might predict a future for these U.S. sanctions on China. But first, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, AG1. Microchips are the most important technology in our world today. They literally power everything from our toothbrush to our smartphones. But the most advanced machine in the entire world is our bodies, and you need to be fueling your body for success. I've been using AG1 by Athletic Greens for four weeks now, and it has instantly become my favorite nutritional drink that fuels my body and allows me to produce my best content here on YouTube. Many of you have been seeing I've been pumping out a lot of videos recently on YouTube. And I have to credit a lot of that to the mental focus I've gotten since I started using AG1. AG1 is an all-in-one foundational nutrition packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods that has now become a staple in my morning routine. All I need to do is take one scoop once a day, every day, and I'm good to go. Simply just mix it in eight ounces of water, and that's it. One scoop per day supports metabolism and energy levels while also promoting health aging. And the best part, it tastes absolutely fantastic. I couldn't be happier to have such an amazing sponsor like AG1, and today I have a special offer for you. Simply go to athleticgreens.com slash Cyrus Jansen to receive a bonus one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs free with your first purchase. You can't put a price tag on your own health. Click the link below to get started. So how is China going to survive these sanctions from the United States? Let's be honest, the sanctions will hurt China in the short term, but ironically, it will help China significantly in the long term. Just look at this graph that compares China's microchip imports against the chips China produces domestically. 10 years ago, China imported more than double the amount of chips that it could produce. But as of last year, China is nearly producing the same amount of chips as it now imports. Before the US sanctions went into effect, 
China imported over $300 billion worth of microchips every year. That's more than the amount of oil that China imports. Now that China is restricted in purchasing these microchips, China's government is now reallocating that money into China's own semiconductor industry. Remember two years ago when everybody was talking about China's tech crackdown? Many China haters claimed that Xi Jinping was destroying capitalism on a quest for more power. Realistically, the West misinterpreted China's crackdown on the tech sector. Xi Jinping wasn't destroying China's tech companies. Instead, he was preparing the nation for a long-term struggle with the United States. The Chinese government wanted private investments to move away from finance and digital payments and instead flow to hard technologies. This graph illustrates China's monumental shift in strategy. In 2016, China was investing very little in robotics, semiconductors, and biotechnology. Fast forward just five years, and the government is now investing billions into these key industries. Bloomberg even reported how this shift sent China's venture funding to a record $131 billion despite the tech crackdown, with China chip deals drawing six times more funds than the United States. One thing we must always remember about China is the country and its people are resilient. Chinese people will always xiang banfa, or think of a solution to the biggest challenge they face. When the US successfully convinced the Netherlands and Dutch company A. SML to stop selling advanced equipment to China, the Chinese had no other option but to invest domestically. And as this SCMP article points out, China's top memory chip maker, YMTC, is making progress in producing advanced products using only locally sourced equipment. China is going to survive these sanctions. But what about the foreign companies I mentioned at the start of the video who have seen their revenues decline tremendously because of plummeting demand? Joe Biden recently met South Korean President Yoon last month in Washington, D.C. However, the meeting disappointed corporations in South Korea as the United States offered no support or concessions for Korean chip makers like Samsung who own and operate chip factories directly in mainland China. But here is where things get very interesting. Companies around the world are finding loopholes around US sanctions to creatively sell microchips to China. Let's break it down with an example. US company Nvidia manufactures the A100 and H100, the two most advanced AI chips in the world. Under new sanctions, Nvidia is no longer allowed to sell these chips to China. However, they are allowed to sell A800s and H800s, which is simply a downgraded version that Nvidia specifically made to meet sanction requirements. Don't forget, when you are a publicly listed company like Nvidia, your entire goal is to maximize shareholder value. And once again, China is too lucrative of a customer for foreign companies and even local American companies like Nvidia to ignore. Chinese firms are now using three or four of these A800s to simulate one of the A100 chips. Karen Hao, a China tech insider for the Wall Street Journal shares, this signals an important effect of US sanctions that people may not have considered. While China is still struggling to build self-sufficiency in high-end chip production, companies are already thinking of other ways to work around the lack of good hardware. Once again, the West should never bet against China when it comes to manufacturing. Sure, China is still several years behind the most advanced chips in the world, but China is also catching up quickly. Last summer, China's top chip maker, SMIC, achieved a 7 nanometer tech breakthrough on par with Intel, TSMC, and Samsung. The jump from 14 nanometer to 7 nanometer chips took two years to achieve, which was faster than both TSMC and Samsung. Which brings us to the third and final issue surrounding the chip war. How long will companies obey the orders of the U.S. government and restrict sales to China? If recent U.S. sanctions on Russia offer any clues, the chip sanctions are most likely to fail. And here's why. India, Spain, the Netherlands, and Japan are all U.S. allies and also democratic nations. But all of them have increased their imports from Russia since its invasion in Ukraine. For sanctions to succeed, the U.S. must have the support from four key players in the semiconductor supply chain, Japan, South Korea, the Netherlands, and of course, Taiwan. Japan and the Netherlands both agreed to sanction China, but no specifics have been mentioned. Japan is more likely to look at China as a potential threat to the region over the issue of Taiwan. But once again, all of these countries are walking an incredibly fine line, appeasing longtime ally America while avoiding tensions with China, a key economic and trading partner for almost every country in the world. Take Japan's largest semiconductor firm, 
Tokyo Electron, for example. 30% of its revenue comes directly from China. How can a world-leading semiconductor company afford to take that revenue loss? What's most interesting about these US sanctions is that there is an obvious loophole. Sanctions only apply to products that use parts or technologies from the United States. Simply remove US technologies from the equation and companies can successfully get around these sanctions. In this article from the FCMP entitled, how long can U.S. allies support the semiconductor chip ban on China before caving in? We learn companies are vetting a de-Americanization option, producing prototypes and reconfiguring supply chains accordingly. John Tu, president of Kingston Technology, said companies like ASML, Tokyo Electron, and Nikon could, within the next five years, develop cutting-edge semiconductor equipment without using any U.S. technology. Imagine that. The United States started a chip war with China with the goal of bringing in our closest allies to help us stop the rise of China. But now, those same allies are contemplating an option in removing American technology and finding a way to still do business with China. Stanley Chow Author of Selling to China states, America's most trusted allies are being forced to make tough geopolitical and economic decisions. As the failed Russian export controls show, most countries ultimately choose pragmatism over idealism, profits over protectionism, and sovereignty over security alliances. With a looming world recession and a downturn in the semiconductor industry, there is a chance most countries would cave into domestic pressure and allow chip makers to freely sell to China. The reason for this is simple. As Morgan Stanley recently stated, China will contribute more than 40% to global economic growth in 2023, while Deutsche Bank took a similar stance predicting that China's contribution to Asian exports will recover strongly this year. With all the talks of economic decoupling from China, the reality of the situation is that China remains the key player in our global supply chain. The US and Chinese economies are so tightly entwined that it is almost impossible for the US to harm China without hurting itself. US President Joe Biden is in Japan this week for a G7 meeting where he is expected to unveil new controls preventing U.S. businesses investing into key parts of China's economy. The goal with these restrictions is to limit the rise of China's military capabilities. But once again, my big question is this. Can the U.S. stop the rise of China without hurting our closest allies and even worse, hurting the United States' own economy? Everyone, thank you for spending time with me today here on YouTube. And once again, a huge thank you to AG1 by Athletic Greens for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you take advantage of today's special offer and receive your bonus gifts and invest in your health and what I've personally found to be the best nutritional drink on the market. Simply click the link below to get started. We'll have a lot more to discuss regarding the future of microchips and I look forward to sharing those insights with you in a future video. For now, make sure you're subscribed, drop me a comment, and I look forward to seeing you all in a future video soon.